Okay, so here we are working on the uh, shuttlecraft Galileo from Star Trek, the original series. This is a kit put out by Polar Lights, and uh, it came out a few years ago. I just uh, started it early, and then, yeah, winter in Ohio came about, and yeah, you can't really use rattle cans out in the garage in the winter, so I had to put this on the back burner and get a few other projects done. Apparently there's going to be another version of this released with an interior. This one I'm just doing straight out of the box, no lights, no sounds, just putting it together, painting it, and calling it a day. Uh, this one though, it's uh, I do it a little bit differently. Uh, normally I'll put the kit together then paint it. This one I followed a couple different builders online. Uh, mainly uh, Lou Dalmasso over at Aztec Dummy, uh, Uncle Lou, and also uh, Outsider238, uh, who has probably the best paint scheme for this model. Uh, on the back here and the sides, they show you where the decals go. Don't give them 100% credence because a lot of those are, a lot of the numbers are wrong. So you just have to kind of figure it out on your own and work with it from there. Uh, some of these parts here, I took my nippers, I didn't go right up to the part, uh, just I didn't want to gouge out any of the uh, any of the, the pieces there. Sand it down later, no issues. This kit went together so well for the most part. The pieces here, the nacelles, uh, very, very smooth, went together with minimal, uh, minimal uh, uh, putting and sanding. The instructions though they tell you to do things a certain way you want to put together the the back first work your way to the front well this idiot here he didn't do it like that so I came across a few little gotchas but no worries still came out nice I'm not too worried about it plus I know in the future I'm gonna be building at least one or two more of these kits and this was such a fun kit to put together such a nice model and I can't wait to see if there is going to be a re-release with the interior because I can't wait for that one. Now, as mentioned earlier, one of the uh, the other channels that I watched with uh, before putting this kit together was Outsider238. Uh, he had those same two same uh, Tumia rattle cans, uh, same colors, perfect colors for it. I mean, it's uh, a lot of the a lot of the kits I've seen online. They're just uh, they're a little little paler than uh, than this. There is a, a nice little color differentiation in there, so it does look good. But uh, yeah, this is one of the days that I was able to go outside and do some spraying. Now, normally I put a kit together before I spray it, but I don't know. Just for some reason, I decided to spray a lot of the kits, uh, spray a lot of the parts first, and then uh, either scrape off paint for gluing or uh, sanding them down. And I think next time I build one of these, I'm just going to go ahead and go back to the original and just go back to assembling first, masking off, painting, then getting the decals on. Oh, there's my neighbor's, neighbor's yard back there. Hey, Dave. I think he watches these videos, so that's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, like I said before, really fun kit to build. Hey, there's, uh, like, there's minimal putting here. These nacelles, I just had one little issue where as I was, as I was uh, taking the, uh, the rubber bands off, it kind of popped the seam on it, so I had to go back and refill it. No worries, you can barely see it after I put it a second time. Now for as simple as a kit that this looks like, it, like when you're getting the pieces put together and checking out the instructions, you do want to follow the instructions to the T. And there are a lot, of, a lot of areas where, like these two pieces here, I probably should have just glued those together before I did anything else, but I was in a hurry. Uh, this project was put on the back burner way too many times because of the weather in Ohio. And finally, when I got to it, I, was, I think I was kind of rushing things. It all comes out in the end though, but uh, yeah, there are some parts that, like the supports 
under the under the wings. You want to make sure you've got the correct numbers where they're supposed to go, or those wings won't fit in. Now the uh, when I when I watched the uh, the video series from uh, Aztec Dummy, Lou pointed out, and there's a there's a spot on the original episode, uh, the Galileo Seven, where you see the uh, from the back of the shuttle there is a seam so he's like you know what if you just have that seam it was on the TV show so don't worry about it I know a lot of other modelers they'll fill that in I ended up just leaving mine no big deal now during the building of this I did go back and rewatched a couple episodes of the old series uh, namely the Galileo 7 and uh, Metamorphosis and uh, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a huge huge Trek fan I'm more of a Doctor Who fan but I have a huge respect for Star Trek and it seems like the uh, the older I get uh, the more I'm enjoying some of those uh, original episodes so but the uh, the the kit here this is this is a model I've actually I've really wanted this for a long time I know there was a kit released years and years ago and a lot of builders have said it's very inaccurate this one is getting nothing but good reviews it's uh, ease of build, uh, accuracy, uh, it's just all in all a really good kit. So as we're working our way through this, uh, just want to uh, remind you to uh, hit that like button. If you're not already a subscriber to Out of This World Models and Minis, uh, I'd really appreciate a, another subscription. Uh, channels start really has taken a uh, a jump in the last uh, last month or so it seems like once I hit 200 subscribers I don't know if something something happened with the algorithm or what but I just really took off uh, as of putting this together doing the voiceover I'm up to 282 which I mean that, that still blows my mind that I've got that many subscribers as of right now but uh, yeah if you're if you're not currently subscribed what's the harm in hitting that button and just hit the uh, subscribe button click the the bell icon so you'll know when I post another video uh, with my hectic work schedule it's I can't really commit to a uh, like once a week or or once every two weeks I'm doing these as much as I can to uh, to be able to put them out as timely as possible but uh, I'm still having a great time with this channel but uh, yeah on, on with the build here uh, going with the uh, old trusty orange tube of testers glue. Uh, there was a couple times where I tried to use the uh, Tamiya uh, cement. It didn't really work out that well for me on this build. Uh, I know the extra thin is like one of the most popular glues out there, but it wasn't really giving me the bond that I needed, so I just went with the trusty orange tube. And I also want to say that the uh, comments section on these videos is really starting to uh, perk up, which uh, it's great. I, I I try to make time to respond to as many comments as I can. Uh, sometimes I don't see them for a little while, so if you did write something and you asked me a question, hey, I will get to it. Uh, just the uh, the 50 plus hour work week it kind of makes it a little tough sometimes, but I will I will get to uh, to answer any questions you might have. Uh, but yeah, answer me a question here. Um, are you a fan of the original Star Trek series? Or do you like the later series? Next Generation, Enterprise, Deep Space Nine? And let's, let's start a conversation on there. Uh, back to the model here. Got it all taped up with some blue, blue painter's tape. The, uh, you see those little gaps there? You can see them on the TV show, so I'm not too worried about it. The, uh, the nacelle caps, I just frosted those over with some uh, matte, uh, matte clear. Just a quick and easy way to frost those things up. Uh, like I said, I did not plan on lighting this model. Uh, there are a lot of people online saying that uh, the uh, apparently the, the nacelle caps, they weren't lit in the original series. So, and builders that are lighting them are uh, a little bit inaccurate with that. But you know what I always say? It's your model, you make it how you want. I think the next one, I will probably, uh, I will probably put some lights in it, but uh, I don't think I'll light up those nacelle caps. 
Now on this one, the uh, I'm using some UV resin and a UV flashlight to uh, to glue and place the uh, the windshield there. I put a little bit of micro uh, crystal clear on there, but it popped off pretty quickly. So I just decided to tape it in place, put some clear resin on there, and harden it up with the flashlight. Okay, working on that back strut here next. Uh, it's pretty involved with this one. It's, uh, you want to make sure that the, the pins fit into the, uh, the bottom brace so it can move around for you. Uh, a lot of times if you paint it up, it'll uh, either, either paint, the paint will keep it in place or it'll kind of lock it, lock it in there. But I had no problems. I just took a one little screwdriver bit from, my, uh, from my, one of my pin vices, cleaned up that opening, and had no issues. Now the kit gives you the option of either having the uh, the model in flight or basically parked. Uh, I just decided to uh, to do it in flight. I figure if I do eventually get another one when they have the uh, the interior included, that's when I'll do like a diorama with a nice display base, kind of kind of mimic the. Uh, the, uh, the ground cover and everything from the episode the Galileo 7. Okay so now we're getting down to the, uh, the nitty-gritty getting some repaints done uh, some touch-up work and uh, just overall just finishing touches before I uh, decide to add the decals. That's the let's see yeah we're all boxed in there Yeah, you can tell I used the uh, orange tube with the super or the uh, model glue with that. Uh, it's not completely put together there. You can see that gap there, but that goes away. I just decided to uh, touch up a few things with that Steinol Res Black. It's uh, it's good for some quick work there. Now this is where uh, those little stabilizers, the pins that go in were either too too large or the holes. That they go into were too small, so I just grabbed a uh, one of my uh, pin vise drill bits and slowly, yep, slowly widen those holes up a little bit. And looking back now, that back leg, that was probably the most intricate part of this entire build. I mean, everything else just pops together with no problems. That you had to uh, you had to fit it into that bottom uh, bottom foot get the uh, get those brackets just right and try to do that all just with two hands thankfully I had the the camera on a tripod because yeah that would have been impossible close to impossible but it's done and uh, all taken care of now wobbly camera now just checking a few fittings there that's just some rust-oleum silver for the the back end caps And it just shows how easy this model is to put together. But like I said, I follow the instructions. Don't think just because it looks like it should go in, it sh it will. Because there are a couple uh, couple spots here where I got caught off guard just because I was uh, being a little too overconfident. Okay, and you can actually see the. Uh, See the foot there that it's, it's glued in place. There's also a step there that's all that's glued in place as well. The um, they give you the choice of having that step out when you have the doors open or in during flight. And I just just went with the uh, in-flight version. All right, now the uh, to me extra thin. I was just putting those support brackets on using that. This is uh, it's one of their more popular glues works with uh, capillary action you just put it put the the, uh, the part on there hit it with the glue and it just sucks right up into there uh, this the glue is kind of impossible to use if you're just trying to do with like the uh, the pegs and the holes because by the time you get all the uh, all the holes filled in the first ones are starting to dry up on you so that's how that glue works and just 
finishing up those support struts there. But we're getting really close to the uh, the end of this. Um, gonna be putting some decals on here pretty pretty soon, and then we'll get some uh, final shots. The <laughs> the model would not fit on my carousel, so I just had to get some just some uh, static shots, and I did some zoom work with the uh, the editing software. Uh, right here, the back strut is completely dried, and the uh, paint job here it's some. Citadel Sycorax Bronze. And then I'll hit a few spots with uh, Vallejo Silver. I did go ahead and uh, put a little bit of Citadel's Null Oil on there, but I didn't film that. It's uh, It just dirties it up a little bit. And I found with, uh, with this one, it actually looks a lot nicer if you don't dirty it up. Coming from the guy who weathers everything. And that's what it looks like when it's all finished. That back foot is is supposed to uh, move around like that. Yeah, it's a little sloppy on the inside, but it all works out in the end. And then there's a uh, there's a template that they give you for the top, the uh, the roof of the uh, of the the shuttle. That you can actually etch the uh, like a pattern in. I didn't do that because I didn't want to slip and make a big uh, big mess on there. I'm just getting some super glue on those uh, on the joins for the the back strut. Super glue came out really thin, really watery there. All right, now it's time for decals, decals, however you say them. And these these went on uh, pretty easily but like I said in the beginning the sheet with the numbers it does not correspond to the numbers that they give you on the box for the locations there are only maybe three or four that actually did that I found so polar lights and figure out your decals because if you're trying to follow it exact it's gonna be wrong they also give you some other names for the if you want to do something other than the Galileo, you can do the Einstein, the Columbus. I mean, if you're daring enough and you've got enough money to do it and the room just to, to display it, make a whole docking bay. Put, uh, put all three there. But I won't be doing that because, yeah, I can't afford that. Alright, so pledge. So, uh, future gloss coat make sure that when you put your decals on your your model they're going over a gloss coat because if not you when they dry they will give you that silvering look on the edge of the uh, of the decals the gloss coat gives it something to slide around on and, and it actually adheres better uh, so you, you don't get those silvering edges there all I'm doing is just taking a cheap brush because I actually didn't have any uh, any gloss spray at this time I picked it up like three days later but just giving it a gloss coat on all the areas that are going to be uh, be decaled there okay, right there that's where the Galileo logo will go then you've got all your pendant markings the big registry on the sides then there's a small uh, small number of them that go like one next to the door, one underneath the door. Yep, got a smooth top, but like I said, they do give you a template if you want to etch in a pattern. I didn't want to chance it. My luck, the my etcher would slip and I'd make a big mess and I'd have to sand the whole thing down and putty it. And, and I also decided not to not to do the open uh, hatch on the on the very back like was uh, in the episode the Galileo 7 Spock was working on the inside hatch there I'm gonna wait until the next kit comes out and then I'll just go to town on all that all that this one like I said I just wanted to do 
out of the box build, get it built, get it on my shelf, be happy with it, and move on to the next project. But if they are in fact coming out with a kit with an interior, that's gonna be fun, but a lot more work. All right, Microset, Microsol. I got a one and two because first you use the Microset and then you use the Microsol. Microset, in as soon as you uh, as soon as you open that up, it smells like they just put white vinegar in there. This just goes onto the surface just to help clean the area, and it also keeps the decal from like sticking right then and there to the surface. The gloss coat gives it some some sheen, makes it easier to slide around with, and then the uh, the Microsol or the Microset rather, sorry. That just gives it something to slide around with. So it just kind of helps to lubricate the surface there. But yep, just like that, just stick it there, pull the backing paper, and then luckily, well, if, if you are lucky enough, you'll hit it the first time, you won't have to move it around a little bit. Uh, there are a few of these that I had to move around. Uh, there's a little spot on the front registry where it says USS Enterprise that the U kind of got torn off a little bit. I'll fix that after everything is done with uh, a little bit of black, but well, also some masking tape and some black paint. Uh, shake the camera there. Uh, you can see over by the, uh, where it says the Galileo up there, the shiny surface over there from the, someone's on that uh, cotton bud. Uh, that's from the, uh, the future, the, the pledge floor wax. That goes away when you spray the gloss coat over after it. Okay, the uh, the bottle with the red lettering here, this is Microsol. This actually softens up the decal and lets it suck into any kind of recessed areas. And it will bubble up on you. You'll think you did something wrong. And then uh, over the course of like say a few hours or so, it'll just soak right in and set up with no problems. Uh, the tape, just putting on there because it's just protect the windows from uh, gloss coat. And then, yeah, that's about it. So, hey, like, comment, subscribe, share the video with some Star Trek fans. Let's get this up to uh, 300 subscribers soon.